WWL-TV Channel 4, this is an Eyewitness News special. Campaign 2017, the mayoral debate. Brought to you by AARP, live from Xavier University. Here is moderator Dennis Waltering. Good evening. Welcome to the AARP, WWL-TV mayoral debate. Uh, we're about to get underway. The candidates are both here. But before we get underway, we want to have a few words from the state director of the AARP, Denise Botcher. Denise? Thank you so much, Dennis. And thank you all for joining us here this evening. AARP has a long history and tradition of leading initiatives to help meet the needs of the 50 plus population. Whether the issue is retirement, jobs, health care, caregiving, or making communities more livable, AARP has been and will continue to be a tireless advocate and champion on those issues. The country is facing a dramatic demogra demographic shift that is so great it will be felt in every state, every city, and every community. 10,000 people a day, that's 10,000 people a day turn 65, and that will continue over the next 12 years. We're quickly approaching a time when people 65 and older will outnumber children 15 and under for the first time in history. So being older will be the new normal. So that's really what calls us here today. New Orleans next mayor will have important decisions to make, some as soon as she takes office. So AARP Louisiana and its network of volunteers, advocates, and thought leaders are here to work with you as you tackle those important issues so great to the city. Thank you. Denise, thank you very much. And welcome once again to the 2017 AARP WWL TV debate between the two runoff candidates for mayor of New Orleans, City Councilwoman Latoya Cantrell and former Municipal Court Judge Desiree Charbonnet. We're coming to you live from Xavier University, and it just so happens that both candidates are alums of Xavier, so they should feel right at home. No, they I'm attended not. school here. I'm not. I'm sorry. Okay. They both I'm attended Loyola. school here. I'm Xavier. Really? Okay, yeah, yeah. I thought I saw that on your Facebook page. WWL-TV is airing this program on WWLTV.com. You can also watch it on the AARP Facebook page. With the exception of several questions, which I will point out when they come up, my colleagues at WWL-TV and I came up with all the questions I'm asking tonight, and the candidates have not seen them ahead of time. In addition, Danny Monteverde of WWL-TV will join us at certain points in the program to ask questions sent in by viewers to the program online. So let's get started. In this first round of questions, each candidate will have one minute and 30 seconds to answer. Mrs. Cantrell, the first question goes to you. Records show that you used your taxpayer-funded city credit card to pay at least $8,950 in personal or political expenses since taking office five years ago. And it was months, even years, before you paid all of it back. In fact, it was just around the time you qualified to run for mayor when you paid off the last $4,400 that you owed. In effect, you allegedly used tax money for an interest-free loan. The Charbonnet campaign provided these documents to the media, and the district attorney has sent a criminal complaint based on these records to the attorney general to investigate. As a result of this evidence, how can you assure voters that you will oversee their hard-earned taxes and the city's billion-dollar budget with honesty, integrity, and without corruption? Sure. Thank you so much for that question. And what, did you, what you brought out in it was that the document submitted by my opponent, uh, which manipulated public records uh, that were dropped off uh, to the media and other offices throughout the city of New Orleans, uh, entitled Explosive. Uh, in no way the resources in terms of expenditures on the city card were uh, misrepresented one by me, uh, were uh, one in violation of any ethical rules. Uh, they were not in violation of any uh, credit card procedures or policies associated with the city of New Orleans as it relates to council members. And so, and, and also uh, they were uh, expenditures that advanced the city of New Orleans. So in no way did I use my credit card for personal expenses. However, I did reimburse uh, the city of New Orleans to ensure, one, that there were uh, any gray areas. I went above and beyond what was even required just to ensure knowing who my opponent is and who's behind her and the tactics that they uh, advance. 
So I wanted to do the right thing, making sure that there was no impropriety. And while being on the New Orleans City Council, my record has uh, not been questioned at all. I have been prudent and I have um, led with um, unquestionable integrity. And I will continue to do that. Uh, but allegedly, you used uh, this taxpayer-funded money and didn't pay it back for months or years. Allegedly, you got a tax-free loan that taxpayers paid for. Well, I, mean, I disagree with that simply because the expenditures that you're talking about were, one, no personal expenditures, and two, did advance the work that I have done for the city of New Orleans while serving on the New Orleans City Council. And you go back to saying allegedly, which is absolutely correct, and the fact that the information that you're referring to was manipulated by my opponent. Well, one more thing, Mrs. Cantrell. You made a trip to San Francisco in early June of this year. Mm -hmm. The mayor of San Francisco hosted a fundraiser for you. Mm -hmm. In examining your credit card records, investigative reporter David Hammer found out that during that trip, you used your city credit card to take your family out to a $600 dinner and used uh, it also for Uber and taxi drives, taxi rides. You reimbursed the city in August, but Respectfully, what prompted you to use your city credit card for a $600 dinner for your family? Well, actually, that's actually not the, the case. Um, the city of San Francisco has been a real partner with the city of New Orleans, <laughs> and I did have a fundraiser in San Francisco, which was not used at all in terms of public expenditures. Uh, so the public had no, uh, no public dollars were used towards that at all. But when I am in San Francisco, I definitely uh, take advantage of the opportunity to meet with individuals that have advanced work there. So for example, while there, visiting group homes and also uh, as it relates to uh, males the age of 16 to 24 and looking at best practices there in terms of how they can be advanced in the city of New Orleans and um, that was not uh, repaid by me. You said and the $600 dinner for your family? It was not a $600 dinner for my family. Okay. Mrs. Charbonnet, next question for you. District Attorney Leon Canizero has been a staunch supporter of yours. Mm -hmm. Your brother, Bernard Bunny Charbonnet, works for the DA. Yes. Uh, and Canizero has indicated he's supporting you at least in part because you have assured him you will restore a $600,000 cut that Mayor Landrieu and City Council imposed on his budget. Have you promised him that you will restore that budget cut? Have you made any kind of promises involving taxpayer dollars with the district attorney or anyone else in order to gain political support? What's your response to what Canizero has reportedly said about your commitment to him? And has the DA improperly used the power of his office to advance your attack on Mrs. Cantrell? First of all, I've never admitted or told the DA that I would give him the budget back. I told him I would reconsider his budget and give him a budget that is appropriate for his office. Um, at no time have I committed that other $600,000 to him. Um, the question was as it relates to... Have you made any promises involving taxpayer no, money? No, I've made no promises to, to no one. Support? And, and out, throughout this entire campaign, there have been no promises to anyone. And what's your response to his, his uh, reportedly saying that you made well, that commitment? Well, you know, I can't control the district attorney. Um, he can say what he wants, but the fact is that I never committed that to him. I would never do that. I can't do that in the blind without knowing what the budget's going to be. In fact, the budget for 2018 is already going to be prepared before I even get there. So there's no way I could commit that. I would have no hand in preparing the budget. Mm -hmm. um, what, what the DA does in terms of Ms. Cantrell's improprieties and whether he is going to file charges or move them on to the Attorney General has nothing to do with me. I don't have any conversation with him about that. Mm -hmm. It is within his purview to do so. He realizes that he is endorsed me and it would be inappropriate for him to go forward with any charges. Mm -hmm. But speaking of the DA, I want to make some clarities here while we have a moment. You know, the DA has espoused certain practices that I do not support, particularly the subpoenas. I do not support that and I do not, I never once issued a warrant for a victim in a trial. So I want to show that there is very clear distinction between my philosophies and the DA's. Mrs. Cantrell says that she did not make any, uh, did not charge the city credit card any personal expenses. W what's your response That's to her? That's not true. The record reflects that she's made many personal charges. Like what? <laughs> okay. You have purchased your allergy medication, you purchase candy, you buy magazines when you're in the airport waiting for your flights, no you buy Listerine. Please. 
I'm sorry, go um, ahead. Other personal items that I will not disclose in front of everyone. I mean, um, please You do. know, you bought a turkey two days before Christmas. That's not been reimbursed. Got to wonder where that's going to be used. So the list goes on and on. I really, I, that is it would not take true. us all day, that all day for you to really all. know the amount of. That is not true of, at all. Well, if Ms. they weren't personal, the question is, why are you reimbursing them? You know, if there's nothing attached to any business, then why all these purchases, why are you reimbursing them? Well, one is to ensure that I'm staying on in budget, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that I am. 1,400 days later, some are paid back. 1,400. Mrs. Cantrell? Ma'am, please. Please. That's All right, Mrs. Charbonnet, uh, next question goes to you. Amiss. When you were elected to the Office of Recorder of Mortgages in 1998, you terminated 28 people, and at least 10 of those people filed a lawsuit accusing you of firing them for political reasons. Mm -hmm. That lawsuit was dismissed. Mm -hmm. Yet your critics say you replaced many of the people that you fired with friends and political allies. Mm -hmm. How can you assure voters now that you won't use contracts, uh, that you won't be giving, uh, that you won't be giving political allies and friends contracts and that you won't be using the mayor's office as a patronage haven and uh, hiring family members regardless of qualifications well first of all when someone wins an office they have every right to build the team that they desire no mayor steps in and keeps the same cao or any other administrators in their um, administration so it's well within your right um, i had a thorough investigation of the individuals who i did terminate it was not 28 to my recollection and i did replace them with people that i thought i could rely on um, it was a different atmosphere in that office, and I wanted to change the nature of that office, the culture in that office. The gentleman who ran that office was sued for sexual harassment and paid the judgment with taxpayer money. There was a different, there was a certain vibe in that office that I needed to get rid of. How can you assure the voters that uh, you won't use the mayor's office as a patronage haven? Because I've made that commitment to the, to the, the voters. The citizens here know me. I have never been controlled by anyone. I have never, ever given out any contracts that were improprietous. Actually, as a judge, I've never had that many opportunities to do so, but I have made a commitment to this, this community. I am hiring an ethics compliance officer that will ensure that the contracts are let on a fair basis, and that is how it's going to work. Okay. Mrs. Cantrell, the same question goes to you. Uh, what measures will you take to assure voters that you will not give contracts, jobs, and favors to big money political contributors, allies, and relatives? What steps will you take to assure the people of New Orleans that qualifications, expertise, and best practices will be your only considerations when hiring and awarding contracts? Absolutely. I will ensure uh, the voters by keeping the executive orders in place as it relates to contract uh, procurement as well as going through those processes. I have a demonstrated track record to this community time and time again, both elected and not elected, of delivering results to the people. And I will continue uh, serving at that level and stage of integrity because the people of this city matter. And it is time for us to break away from the old way of doing things, particularly my opponent over here and what her track record has been. And so I have done nothing but deliver results, and I stand by that 100%. All right. Next question goes to you, Mrs. Cantrell. The Harvey Weinstein scandal has caused a kind of awakening about sexual harassment and assault in this country, and the online hashtag MeToo response to the scandal has been an extraordinary revelation about the extent of it, the secrecy surrounding it, and the personal injury and damage it causes. One of you will become the first woman mayor of New Orleans. Both of you have risen to this historic moment through years of public service in city government. Have you ever encountered sexual harassment anywhere? If so, what did you do about it? Does city government have a proper way to deal with complaints of sexual harassment and assault? And as mayor, what steps would you take to ensure that city employees have a safe, harassment-free work environment? Mrs. One Cantrell? is making sure that policies and procedures are in place and holding people accountable, having internal controls, uh, working definitely with human relations and others. Um, in regards to have I ever been harassed, uh, no, I have not. However, I have led on the New Orleans City Council to ensure, uh, particularly not only the environment within City Hall, but even throughout our city. So for example, uh, the harassment cases that we've heard of on Bourbon Street, for example, the adult nightclubs, being very forceful and working with my colleagues to do Operation Trick or Treat, which uh, now we have fully implemented 
uh, a study that the commission has returned and uh, we're moving on those to ensure that again laws are passed we push forward and changing the age uh, requirement for working in adult nightclubs and of course just wanting to make sure especially uh, being a mother uh, that our women our children are protected at the highest level and especially within city government but particularly throughout the city of New Orleans. No nonsense approach. Judge Charbonnet, have you ever encountered sexual harassment? If so, what did you do about it? Does city government have a proper way to deal with complaints of harassment and assault? As mayor, what steps would you take to ensure that there's a safe work environment? I've dealt with um, sexual harassment, not on a personal level, but when I was the recorder of mortgages, um, I did have an employee that was sexually harassed by a fellow employee. And after investigating it, it was determined that he did, in fact, do that to the young woman, and he was terminated. So uh, my proof is in my record in terms of how I handle them. When I become the mayor, I'm going to review the current sexual harassment policy and determine whether it is sufficient uh, for today's times. And uh, if it is not, we will enhance it. Okay. Judge Charbonnet, next question goes to you. A recent WWL-TV New Orleans advocate poll revealed that crime is the issue most voters are most concerned about in this election. Both of you have made crime reduction a top priority. A bit later on, we'll pursue this in a broader context, but right now I want to ask about something you're both promising, and that is creating jobs to cut crime. Mm -hmm. How will you create jobs, especially for at-risk young people, before they have to resort to crime? How will you provide job training where necessary and how would you pay for it, Judge Charbonnet? So we have two options there. First of all, the Sewage and Water Board um, has 300 plus jobs available right now. What we need to do is train these young people in terms of the positions that are there so that they can fill those positions right away. That's money we don't even have to look at, look for. The money's there to hire those individuals. We also have $2.4 billion in the capital projects budget well, it's allocated to us. It's a reimbursement program. And from there, we can also start hiring our youth. Listen, as a judge in municipal court, I saw crime every day. And I know for a fact, Dennis, that if those individuals, the majority of those individuals, if they had jobs, they would not have been in my courtroom. So I see, I have seen every day what economic opportunity can do and a lack of it, what happens when there is none. How do you provide job training? You, get, you partner with the community colleges. Or you, listen, I think Sewage and Water Board ought to do it themselves. Listen, they know what's needed. They know what's, what's required for these positions. And that's a good way of the city leading by example. So you pay for it by partnering with community colleges? College, community what colleges. Else? And for those jobs at Sewage and Water Board, I would have them trained, trained by the city, by the Sewage and Water Board department themselves. There's nothing wrong with that. And it's a great idea because they know exactly what to do when they get there. Mrs. Cantrell, you have said nothing stops a bullet like a job. But how will you create those jobs and how will you provide training? How will you pay for it? Well, m uh, multiple steps. One, um, as I have been able to create uh, jobs and opportunity while being on the New Orleans City Council, being very intentional about linking and incentivizing development in the city of New Orleans, again, creating jobs. I would fully expand and keep going the STRIVE program uh, that has proven to be effective meeting the needs of our most vulnerable people, giving them the soft skills and additional uh, skill sets that they need. What is to that go program? I'm sorry? What is that program? That program is a workforce development program that was started uh, by this administration over a year ago. Uh, it is tied to uh, workforce development, tied also now uh, to uh, the Greater New Orleans Business Alliance. We're looking at it, making it really uh, comprehensive in terms of meeting the needs of our, of our people. Um, in regards uh, to additional is playing to our strengths as it relates to our higher ed community. We have eight colleges and universities and two medical schools in the city of New Orleans that we don't look at as an industry, and it is. So linking and partnering with uh, this community, Delgado is a part of it as well, but to create workforce development opportunities, uh, really aligning with the industries that we know that are growing here and that are here. So whether that is advanced manufacturing, renewable energy, a digital media platform, stormwater management, um, it goes, it really goes on. And so grooming our people, educating them and preparing them for the jobs that we have as well. Uh, in addition to that, 
dual enrollment is something that, again, we don't play to our strengths with. Uh, this year, May, we had about 21 students are graduating from high school with dual enrollment, certi certifications in engineering um, and, and plumbing and, and all this. But I would also support the creation of the career and technical um, institution that the Orleans Parish School Board is working on right now. So okay. there are things that are at play that I would love to expand on, as well as incentivize future growth and development in the city. Thank you, Mrs. Cantrell. 